right. Um, I'm, I'm, here, I'm here just to smile and laugh. And uh, to be myself, apparently, is a very important thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was asked to be myself, but I've decided tonight to be Lauren Bacall. <laughs> Welcome to Have I Got News For You, I'm David Mitchell. In the news this week, at a dinner in Washington, one of America's top comedians tells the guest of honour the joke that was recently voted the funniest in the world. <laughs> in Afghanistan, President Karzai puts yet another opposition vote into the shredder. <laughs> And in Saffron Walden, one fan regrets winning the eBay auction for the wax syringed out of Andrew Marr's ears. <laughs> On Ian Hislop's team tonight is one of the country's top stand-ups who's been described as a bright, chipper comedian, a breath of fresh air in an industry full of sarcasm. Yeah, right. <laughs> Please welcome Ed Byrne. <laughs> and with Paul Merton tonight, an English artist who won the Turner Prize in 2003. He collected the award dressed as his alter ego, Claire. Well, you wouldn't want anyone to know you'd won the Turner Prize, would you? <laughs> Please welcome Grayson Perry. And we start with the bigger stories of the week. Ian and Ed, have a look at this. Uh, bankers, that's Mervyn, Bank of England. Goldman Sachs, <laughs> I can read. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is a new reality show called Taunt the Poor. <laughs> <laughs> and again, champagne flowing in the city. We're all still feeling the effects of the downturn, but apparently good times are back again in the city. Um, and there was a the tough choice. Bank. The Royal Bank of Scotland, the bankers, they've made a lot of profit this year. And they had to choose to lend more money to people stack it up as capital, or give it all to themselves. <laughs> Tough choices, as David Cameron said. <laughs> and they decided to have all of it, despite the fact that we're basically bankrolling all of them, the whole sector. They're all, you're all getting massive bonus checks, which at least will have to be sent to them, so, so it's good news for the Royal Mail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, the Royal Bank's actually hired a whole load more investment bankers, so they didn't actually have to have these people. Well, good, because the ones they had before were shit. <laughs> 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 and d d do you know that the Sun has revealed what the total figure that's been set aside for city bonuses this year is? Anyone know how much that is? Is it 40 trillion? Uh, no, two million. No, it, no, it's in between the two. <laughs> See, it's uh, <laughs> as so many numbers are. Uh, yes, it's it's six billion. But is... isn't six billion the exact figure that we pumped into the banks? No, it was much more than that. <laughs> Which is essentially um, they murder someone and then you pay them to carry the corpse away. Yeah. That's their job. <laughs> yes, well, I, th I think we get the money back in taxation, don't we? But you so, won't get a lot so... of that tax, because they've decided that they're going to write off all the losses of previous years against tax. So we won't get that either. So they'll get the money, and the investors, us, will get nothing. So we can't even tax all the money we've given them? No. They oh, dear. <laughs> Sorry? They do buy a lot of art. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but do you know what the, the bonus pot at Goldman Sachs is going to be this year? How about, I don't know, a couple of billion? Oh, no, you're, you're undercharging. 180 billion. No, you're overcharging. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is it somewhere in between it's, the two? It's just, it's, it's essentially <laughs> all oh, these yeah. huge numbers. <laughs> it's actually huge numbers to assholes. That's, that's the summary. <laughs> they're, but, they're wasn't that Clint Eastwood Western? <laughs> <laughs> Part of the Spanish trilogy, was it? <laughs> Did you see what Lord Griffiths, the vice chairman of Goldman Sachs, has said this week? He said... <laughs> 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 Effectively, yes. <laughs> what he said was, inequality is a way of achieving greater prosperity for all. 
Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but those are the words of an evil man, aren't they? <laughs> And the chief executive of the British Bankers Association, Angela Knight, has been similarly sympathetic in her remarks. Do you know what she's been talking about? Did she say, let them eat cake? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> According to the Independent, she called on people to move on from the bonus scam. <laughs> <laughs> to a larger house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would that be a good defence if you were to, like, burgle her house? And then when you finally came to trial, maybe a few months later, and went... Let's just move on. <laughs> <in the family. laughs> but even Boris has come out against the bankers. I mean, you know they've hit rock bottom. <laughs> Boris spent the last year saying, don't blame the bankers, good chaps. And this week he said, blimey, have you seen what they pay themselves? <laughs> Absolute <laughs> outrage. <laughs> so after a, the whole of the Western world has more or less collapsed, Boris has caught up. <laughs> <laughs> What horrible evil plan have the government got that they're trying to distract us from? That's what I'm trying to think. The, the, the idea gonna... that Gordon's got a plan is no. a bit <laughs> It might be a distraction from MPs' expenses, which you've all forgotten about. <laughs> it does make fiddling your hobnob bill look a bit pathetic, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> yes, you say I had to repair my moat because I use it for drowning bankers. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, do you know who else has been celebrating this week, apart from bankers? Oh, Jensen Button. He has been, but I was thinking more a sort of sector of the community who is often hated. <laughs> not, I mean, I don't know, maybe Jensen Button. hated. I'm not, I'm not hated. that keen on Formula One. Neither am I, actually. It's quite good when you can't get to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> or driving a Formula One car. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually estate agents who are apparently on the up as well. Um, and the person putting the government's case on TV has been Lord Miners, the Financial Services Secretary, and uh, here he is in happier times. <laughs> Grace, what do you think? He, he carries it off surprisingly well, doesn't he? Upper arms. <laughs> Bingo wings. Right. Bingo wings. Bingo wings. Better watch out for that, have you? Yeah. I think he's got a bit of a farmer's tan as well. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? You've heard of farmers. I've heard of farmers. <laughs> do you know, I've, I've heard of farmers, I've heard of tan, I've just never put the two concepts together. <laughs> No, because they work outside, so they get a tan up to here. Because they have and to wear the shirt, shirt sleeves, so as yeah. not to scandalise the sheep. Is it sure it's not called a farmer's tan because they only put their arm up the cow's arse that far? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, you, do you know what Lord Miners was quoted as saying about bankers this week? Fair play yeah. to them. Uh, <laughs> well, what he said was, the taxpayer will not be taken for a goosestrum noodle for a second time. <laughs> This good job because the last goosestrum noodle still <laughs> <laughs> still repeating. Um, it seems that Harrods has now decided also, as well as the estate agents and bankers, that the good times are back and started selling something new. Did anyone see this? Swan sandwiches. <laughs> no. Is it a gold-plated Duke of Edinburgh? <laughs> no. It's but you're, you're half right. <laughs> Is it a solid gold, Duke of Edinburgh? <laughs> well, it's, it's is solid it? gold, is what it's they're selling. It's solid gold. They're selling, they're flogging gold bullion off the shelf. <laughs> you can buy anything from a gram to a 12 and a half kilogram bar, and according oh. to the Mail, they claim it's the only place in London where a customer can walk in and come away carrying a gold bar without breaking the law. Unless they just nicked it, obviously. <laughs> Did Alfaya just look around the shop and go, no, it's not gaudy enough. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I blame lazy jewellers. <laughs> they haven't been bothered to fashion it into anything. Just, just a brick, leave it as a brick. <laughs> I, I do think that's an interesting counterpart to what's going on at question time. You're going, I blame the jewellers. <laughs> <laughs> Who else has been talking about money this week? Everybody, at some point. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. It's terrible. How much have they been talking about art this week? Oh, not so much. It's Less. a minority interest. Yeah. Oh, you put the Royal Bank of Scotland in your tapestry, didn't you? I did. A ship of fools? Yeah, the RBS is the lookout on the ship of fools. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is on the ship of fools? Not me. No. <laughs> you, you, you. <laughs> <laughs> the answer's not to do with tapestries. Um, it's, uh, it's actually to do with postmen, who've also been talking about money this week. So there's a strike. There's probably a strike on now. Mm. And on the repeat. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, if you're watching Dave, there's probably still a strike. <laughs> <laughs> 
So anyone been affected yet? Ian, what are you going to do about your subscriber? <laughs> I'm going to take round his copy personally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, I... <laughs> so I, I have got one letter this week. I didn't think I'd get any mail, but I got a letter in the post from a solicitor called Carter Ruck. <laughs> I've heard they're very good. Yeah. <laughs> it says not for publication, so I'd better not read it out. Um, but it said the injunction from last week that a lot of people made a lot of fuss about has been totally discharged. Oh, dear, how humiliating for them. <laughs> but, um... I, I, the, the postmen. Um, I feel sorry for them, particularly the ones on the first day of the strike, cos everyone arrived at your door with your letters and everyone went, I thought you were on strike. No, that's us tomorrow. It's just already people on strike today. And after a while, it must have become very wearisome for them. Mm. And I thought, as soon as I said it to my postman, I thought you were on strike. No, we're tomorrow. Sorting stuff today. I went, how many times have you said that to arseholes who don't quite keep up exactly to the news? Yes. <laughs> Even ones who are appearing on topical news shows <laughs> on the <laughs> this week. To be fair, what else are you going to say to a postman? <laughs> I mean, what do you say the rest of the time? I see you're delivering letters as usual. <laughs> The thing to ask is, is there a way I could get my letters uh, <laughs> on, a, on a sort of amateur basis? Where do they... Where, where do you get them from? <laughs> I ordered Speed 2 off Amazon. <laughs> um, but the, the government have tried to be helpful uh, th uh, through its official citizens' website, DirectGov, this week. Do you see what they've said as advice in the event of a postal strike? If possible, email or telephone, <laughs> rather than using the post. I hope someone was paid through the nose for coming up with that. <laughs> but yes, this is the heartwarming news that bankers are doing their bit for the economy by limiting the size of their bonuses to a mere £6 billion. Mervyn King, the Governor of the Bank of England, launched a blistering attack on the banks, saying that the size of the bailout was breathtaking. If only we had someone to control them, a sort of... Governor of England's banks. <laughs> Mervyn King questioned the size of the bailout that banks got from taxpayers by paraphrasing Churchill. Never has so much money been owed by so many to so few. No, that's the other, other way bloody around. way around. <laughs> you didn't paraphrase in that bad. No, no. <laughs> and it's paraphrasing, not paraphrasing. Paraphrasing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Any more notes on that? <laughs> uh, Mervyn King questioned the size of the bailout that banks got from taxpayers by paraphrasing Churchill. Never has so much money been owed by so few to so many. The bankers responded in similar Churchillian fashion by lighting a big fat cigar and raising two fingers. <laughs> Paul and Grayson, here's yours. Oh, yes. This is the hot air balloon story uh, of the week. The family who said that their six-year-old boy was in that hot air balloon, they believed, and uh, planes were scrambled. That man was woken up specially to run into the field. <laughs> Did they own a branch of Little Chef? Yeah. <laughs> They pretended that he was on board and the, and the balloon was taken up and, uh, and people were scrambled and they thought that perhaps that the uh, six-year-old wouldn't give the game away because being sick, he was a bit thick. He didn't, didn't, <laughs> didn't quite understand the scam as it had been, as it'd been explained to him, so he gave it away on CNN by saying it's all been part of a show. In a TV interview, when his father asked him yes. why he carried on hiding, Falcon, the idiot, said, <laughs> you guys said that, um, we did this for a show. <laughs> Because they were on a reality, reality TV show before, weren't they? Yes, our, that's our right. Our super yachts capsized, and before that, they were in a, we were in a train crash. And this was the third in the trilogy. <laughs> oh no, the hot air balloons disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> and initially, they thought they posited it as that he was upstairs having a sulk. And I thought, when I yeah. first read the story, it was a victory for sulkers. Yeah. You know, as a big sulker when I was a child, I yeah. thought, yeah, he's really got one over on his parents. He's, he's scrambled the US Air Force over his... <laughs> he's really triumphed. And I was like, yeah, sulkers, go! You know? Yeah. <laughs> what were they hoping to gain? Was there an insurance scam or...? No, they wanted to be on TV. They'd been on Wife Swap I think already. They were a bit, as well. And they just... <laughs> 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 you know. Really? Yeah, I think they think. Don't they think the world's going to come to the end, come to an end in 2012 or something? Really? And that's that's only going to happen in Stratford. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was a helium balloon, though. It wasn't even a hot air balloon, and it, and there wasn't even a basket on it. So if the kid was inside it, 
he would have just asphyxiated anyway. <laughs> his last after words briefly were... sounding really squeaky and funny. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's saying his cries for help as he suffocated would have been would really have been... funny. Yeah. <laughs> The Heens are facing jail, according yes. to the Mirror. Well, yep. Do you know what they'll be charged with? Impersonating a reality TV show participant. Slapping <laughs> 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 a kid very hard in the face immediately after a press conference. <laughs> <laughs> it's conspiracy, contributing to the delinquency of a minor. That's obviously the slap yep. you referred to. And filing a false report. The uh, Colorado police defended being taken in by the deception. On the bizarre meter, this rates a ten. <laughs> I'm glad they're well equipped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and on the subject of reality TV, the Japanese have been pushing back the boundaries of taste yet again this week. It's a reality show called Panic Face King, in which the <laughs> participant <laughs> thinks he's having a normal meeting when in fact he's. Well, have a look at this. <laughs> They recreate a terrorist incident <clears throat> as though there weren't enough and then invite you to find it amusing. I think what, what it is, it's advanced slapstick. Instead of seeing someone just fall into a pond, it's watching a man grovel in fear for his very life. <laughs> Are you sneering at cultural difference again? I'm sneering at that programme, <laughs> you know. I'm fine with sushi. <laughs> This is the bizarre US media furore over Balloon Boy, who, to the annoyance of millions of American viewers and YouTube ghouls, did not plummet to his death after all. As TV viewers followed the progress of the runaway balloon, Denver Airport was closed, and at one point it was suggested that the US Air Force shoot it down, though on pass form they'd probably have missed and hit an Afghan wedding. <laughs> It turns out that the Heens have previously appeared on the reality show Wife Swap, and indeed Richard Heen is now set to appear on another edition of Wife Swap, only this time set in a Colorado jail. <laughs> also this week, also this week, a Japanese hidden camera TV programme faked a sniper attack to scare a contestant. Naturally, after the victim was humiliated on national television in front of millions of Japanese viewers, he committed ritual suicide, which was also hilarious. <laughs> And so to round two, you'll see a disguised picture of someone who's been in the news this week. And the question I'll be asking is, who am I and why am I in the news? <laughs> I recognise the outfit. Yeah. <laughs> this is the guy, this, this is the uh, Maldives government. They were holding a meeting underwater to illustrate the difficulty of life in the Maldives with the raising uh, of the uh, ocean. That's absolutely right. Mm. Yes, let's take away the disguise. And now, obviously, you recognise that prominent member of the Maldives government, <laughs> as, as do I. Shall we have a look at this cabinet meeting? Yes. They've given Fish the vote. <laughs> it actually seems to be going rather well, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, do you reckon they have floating voters? <laughs> <laughs> In a way, I think they've sort of shot themselves in the foot there by showing how, how well the Maldives society <laughs> would work yeah. underwater. It's a way of getting them sort of bringing green policies, though, is to sort of put them in peril somehow. On a coral reef. You know, if they don't... Or a Japanese reality show. <laughs> <laughs> you keep giving them an excuse not to cut that crap out. <laughs> and uh, what did the Maldivian president have to say about, uh, about this cabinet meeting? He said, I'd rather be doing this than appearing in a Japanese reality <laughs> TV show. <laughs> Yes, more or less. Did he? Uh, yeah, he, <laughs> said, he said, we have to get our message across in a way that resonates with ordinary people. Yeah. Or, or rather, we have to get our message across with ordinary people. And what's the latest German idea to encourage people to consider leaving the car at home? Making everywhere really unattractive to go to. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's more seedy than that. It's more seedy. Yeah. Portable brothels that run on their own steam. <laughs> You're getting closer now. It's really? Think bicycle, think brothel. And, you know... <laughs> and, and, sure, I'm finished. And, yeah. 
OK. Yeah, and now, what it is, is that one Berlin brothel yep. is offering a five euro discount for clients who arrive by bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> to, <laughs> to prove it, according to the Independent, they have to present their helmet at the desk. <laughs> This camp for cyclists have been widely welcomed. Chained to the railings outside, one client said, next time I'll bring my bike. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in Stockholm, thousands of dead rabbits are being burned to help fuel Swedish central heating systems. There have been protests from animal rights activists who say that using dead rabbits to power your central heating system is a gruesome idea. Well, if you think that's bad, just wait till it's time to bleed the radiators. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. I don't, know who, I, don't, I don't know who that is. Uh, anyone? Do you, should we take away the disguise, give you a yeah. clue? Yep. Anyone want to guess? No, I have no idea. No. <laughs> OK. Next one, fingers on buzzers, team. <laughs> Is it Julie Andrews in Thoroughly Modern Millie? <laughs> it looks like it. It does look no. like it, doesn't it? Um, it's a biscuit. It's a biscuit. And you've disguised question. it with a Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, I mean, that's certainly in one way accurate. But do you know the name of the Prime Minister? I'll take away the dress if it's easier. It's Gordon Brown! Yeah, there you go. <laughs> do you know what the relevance of the biscuit might be? Well, he be? kept being asked about what biscuits he liked and he didn't want to get into it. He yes. was asked 12 times. It was like Paxman. Hmm. <laughs> Except the interviewers were from Mum's Net, <laughs> which is an information exchange for young mothers. Uh -huh. And obviously that's the sort of media Gordon likes to tackle. Um, you don't want to do anything too tough, um, like a news programme um, or question time. So he goes for the, for the other options, but immediately got a question he couldn't answer. <laughs> What's your favourite biscuit? Oh, my God, I've no idea. Um, <laughs> is it the Arctic Monkeys? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, they got an answer out of the Prime Minister. So yeah. anything with chocolate, that's popular. Mm. And ten days after the evasive interview, he apologised for the snub, sending six packets of butter choc chip biscuits to the office of Mumsnet, and the website's co-founder, Justine Roberts, said they came with a handwritten note saying these were the ones he liked best. Long well, it's taken him 12 days... Yeah. <laughs> ..to focus on one decision. Mm. <laughs> well, you can't actually wonder how we go to war. To be fair, he didn't start the wars. Yes. And, of course, Gordon wasn't there when they made the decision, cos he was number two. No. No, he was still choosing what biscuit he to have that morning. Yeah. <laughs> and do you know how his biscuit choice compares with the other leaders? Cameron replied at once, didn't he? Was what it rich tea? It's oat cakes. Oat cakes, oat cakes. yeah. That's not a real Brilliant. answer, though, oat cakes, is it? An oat cake's yeah. like a cheese biscuit. Isn't it? Nobody likes an oat cake with a cup of tea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unless he does. If he does, he's a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it was Nick Clegg who, who said, rich tea if they're dunked, hobnobs if they're not. <laughs> Typical Lib Dem. <laughs> <laughs> the papers tried to fill more space with, with this drivel by asking, what biscuit do you think Gordon would be? Um, <laughs> so, obviously, let's follow suit. Um, what type of biscuit do you think he would be? So, it's actually Short quite a... is too obvious, isn't it? It would be something kind of quite sort of not much taste, a bit like sort of carpet tiles. <laughs> yeah, our choice of biscuit is carpet tiles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think actually Gordon Brown's quite oatcake like. <clears throat> I think the, the tragedy may be that David Cameron wants to eat Gordon Brown. <laughs> <laughs> well, one post on the internet said Brown would be a Tesco value digestive biscuit. Cheap, fragile, snaps easily, <laughs> and lacks texture. Neither style nor substance. <laughs> it's cruel, isn't it? I mean, I think they're perfectly nice biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst chatting to the mums on Mumsnet, Brown was asked if he thought he'd been an unlucky Prime Minister. <laughs> he said, not when I'm sitting here at Mumsnet. <laughs> response from one of the mums was, that has to be the cringiest thing <laughs> I've ever <laughs> Uh, it's been revealed this week that Gordon's old friend, Tony Blair's annual earnings, could exceed £10 million. Does anyone know what TBA stands for? To be arranged? No, it's his company, Tony Blair Associates. Associates so... with whom? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Basically, anyone will take anyone a meeting. Anyone will pay. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, it's his very own consultancy firm. One friend of Blair's said, TBA has been set up to make money from foreign governments. There's a focus on the Middle East because that's where the money is. <laughs> well, as mission statements go, at least they're upfront about it. <laughs> um, but he's got a lot of jobs, hasn't he, Tony Blair, at the moment? Do you know, do you know what other jobs he's got? Is he a yeah, UN envoy? He's, he's a Middle East envoy. He does afternoon speeches in China. Yeah. He's got a company that simulates torture for Japanese television. <laughs> He also earns pounds a week in his spare time working from home. <laughs> Does he cause accidents deliberately and then scam the insurer? <laughs> but on a kind of global scale. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's a Middle East envoy, as well as representing JP Morgan in the region. He's a lecturer at Yale, works for both the Tony Blair Sports and Faith Foundations, and is also currently writing his memoirs. And Sherry works for Claire's Accessories on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> this week, the pressure remained on Gordon Brown as he struggled to answer the question, what's your favourite biscuit? He almost said rich tea, which, coincidentally, is what he now calls Tony Blair. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. It, it, it's it a dog a, that's an artist, by the look of it. Yes, it is a dog that's an artist. <laughs> the dog is called Sam and has been selling his paintings for up to a £1,000. The dog has been selling his well, paintings. I imagine the dog has some sort of agent. Yeah. I mean, I... <laughs> uh, no, well, the way he paints is a special mouthpiece is fitted in his teeth, mm -hmm. and, and he starts painting on the command, paint. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously this has led to a torrent of puns in the sun. The headline was, Poor Casso. <laughs> This is, you're going to... The next few moments could cause you some pain if, <laughs> if poor Casso hurt you that deeply. <laughs> I mean, that, you know, you've preferred the torture programme to... Uh, then the article referenced the Ganational Gallery. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That's pretty bad. The artists were Auguste Grenoir, <laughs> Labrador Dali, oh. Andy <laughs> Poorhole, Sandro Botti Smelly. <laughs> John Chumstable. John someone, Chumstable? Chumstable. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing it. Uh, get, get, someone please kill me. <laughs> uh, anyway, there's a dog that can paint. Grayson, how do you feel about that? Are you threatened? He can't paint. He can move paint about the surface of a bit of paper. You know, <laughs> my cat can do that on the floor. You're such bitches, you artists. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the bitch there. <laughs> but it's abstract. <sighs> <laughs> That question has been answered years and years, a century ago by Duchamp, you know. It's mm. what's good now. Here, that's the difficult question. No, don't pretend not to understand, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great rebuke, that. I'm going to use that. <laughs> don't pretend not to understand, because you're sort of complimenting <laughs> at the same time as being patronising. Mm. <laughs> Elsewhere in the art world, another leading artist has suffered some bad news this week. Do you know who? Damien Hirst opens an exhibition. That's not it, is it? It is Damien Hirst. Oh, is it? Yeah. He's not the top person in the Art Power 100. No, he's the 48th. Are you number one, Grace? No, I don't know if I'm even on it. I doubt I'm on you it. You should be on it. Yeah. I'm I, in the comedy I mean, top 100 who, now. Who, if you're not, who should be on it if not you? It should be you, Damien, Tracy, Rolf. <laughs> Also, major art prize dumped their sponsor this week. Any idea who the sponsor was? Is this Trafigura again? Y yes. This was a, a Trafigura-sponsored art prize. <laughs> that they've, they've dumped Trafigura as their sponsor. It's now called the Young Masters Art Prize. But when, when the initial sponsorship was announced, this was the quote, the Trafigura Art Prize reflects our passionate belief in giving people the opportunity <laughs> to fulfil their potential. <laughs> Unless they live in the Ivory Coast, that is. <laughs> but you sort of think, why do they... Traffic, it reflects our passionate belief in giving people the opportunity to fulfil their potential. Now, they're an oil company. Yeah. Even if they're a completely reputable oil company, which I doubt. <laughs> that doesn't mean they've got a passionate belief in giving people the opportunity to fulfil... They've got a passionate belief in getting oil, moving it and selling it. Yeah. That's, fu that's morally neutral. But Don't pretend not to understand, David. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sam. 
the artistic dog, whose paintings are so popular that they're now hanging in New York galleries. The paintings can fetch up to £1,000, whilst the artist himself can fetch a stick and a rubber ball. <laughs> Sam the dog is a big fan of 20th century art and has a small personal collection, making him the only artist who can lick his own pollocks. <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Just one between you this week. They are Margaret Thatcher, AJP Taylor, Grayson Perry and Tango the Cat. Um, that picture of you there, Grayson, where's that from? That's from Question Time. Question Time. Is it about Question Time? They've, they've all been on question time. Except... <laughs> um, except AJP Taylor, cos it hadn't been invented. No, I think it's no. except Margaret Thatcher. Who wouldn't go on? That's... Yes, you're absolutely right. They've all been on question time, except Margaret Thatcher. I've, I've no idea how, what, how that will manifest itself in points. <laughs> I, think, uh, I was going to say Margaret Thatcher. Could we maybe... Could that in any way sway the points to this side? Are you, are you aware was... of a quiz that will accept the... <laughs> I was going to say defence. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they've all appeared on Question Time, apart from Margaret Thatcher, who never did. After being attacked in her absence, a Question Time audience member defended Margaret by saying, I think Mrs Thatcher is doing a wonderful job and should be veneered. <laughs> <laughs> Tango the Cat, do you know who that is? Do you want know who it is? Mm. Is it so again? It, it just... <laughs> no, no, no. Did he no. wander? Did the cat wander into the studio? I mean, it, wouldn't, it obviously wasn't a guest. <laughs> Michael Heseltine might have let them down or something. <laughs> <laughs> the last minute, like, the cat wandered in at the middle of uh, uh, middle of question time, and David Dim will be pointed at, and everybody laughed. Well, let's have a look. It's bottom right-hand side of the screen. And that may not necessarily be in the long-term interests of the bank. So I think we need to really get back <laughs> to their job being to make sure that the long-term interests of the bank are met rather than anyone else's. OK. So it's, a, it's emerged from David Dimbleby's pocket. He <laughs> <laughs> sits on his lap and he strokes it and says, Ah, Lib Dem, I've been expecting you. <laughs> <laughs> so, AJP Teller, was he on the first one? Well, um, we have a clip of AJP oh, Taylor excellent. on Question Time. How let's, wonderful. Let's have a look. At a recent meeting in South London, um, Roy Jenkins claimed that certain members of the Labour Party, in particular reference to um, members of the GLC, were trying to get control of the police forces in order that they could um, sort of use political influence on it. And I'd like to know what the panel think. Alan Taylor, what do you think about this? To tell you the truth, I don't think anything about it at all. <laughs> That's very honest, but if everybody who came on the <laughs> if everybody who came on the programme was as honest as that, we'd never have a programme. Just for the money. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you think I'm going to start thinking about this problem, you're very mistaken. <laughs> Yes, the answer is that they have all appeared on Question Time, apart from Margaret Thatcher. Baroness Thatcher is now in her declining years, and according to her daughter, Carol, she sometimes struggles to finish sentences. Not always a bad thing, Carol, especially if the sentence ends in the word gollywog. <laughs> <laughs> Tango was a missing cat who turned up safe and well on the set of Question Time. Tango the cat watched impassively as the panel discussed sanctions against Iran and he identified most with the Lib Dem panellists who refused to come off the fence. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication the number one dart magazine, We Heart Darts. <laughs> Though We Coronary Darts might be a bit more appropriate. <laughs> and we start with what? Not necessarily a good idea. Is it subprime mortgages? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Yeah. Inventing <laughs> tools. Inventing tools. And oh. harnessing the power of fire. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes. that, that's what we think. You will question everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. New labour. <laughs> no. Stuffing an archbishop full of walnuts? <laughs> Not necessarily a good idea, brackets, but it's worth a try. It's worth it. <laughs> Especially with Christmas coming. Yeah. <laughs> if you can get him up on the tree, even better. <laughs> um, it's the answer is Blair for president. Oh. That's the yeah. understatement of the year. <laughs> this is about the presidency of the European Union. According to The Independent, despite 38,000 people signing a petition against it, Blair remains a favourite to take the post, which comes with a string of perks. Of course it does. Why else would he and the little woman be interested? <laughs> Next. P. 
Pilgrim's what during Mayflower's Ocean Crossing? Got bored of playing I Spy. <laughs> Progress. <laughs> Became American. <laughs> Teach a horse to say the word sombrero. <laughs> sombrero. <laughs> it's a long uh, trip, you've got to do something. Yeah. <laughs> The answer is played darts. The answer. Uh, Next. Sarkozy, I what in a sexual way? I don't mean it. <laughs> That's very close. I was love Gordon Brown. That's absolutely right. Oh, I no. love Gordon, but not in a sexual way. <laughs> I just don't need to clarify that. Had Gordon, had Gordon got the wrong end of the stick? <laughs> if this was the French president talking about his relationship with Gordon Brown, which he says is entirely platonic. No, things took a turn for the worse when Sarkozy added, but put this outfit on and maybe you change my mind. <laughs> Tell me I'm tall. <laughs> Next, if you're tired of what, you're tired of darts. If you're tired of the glamorous lifestyle. <laughs> no. If you're tired of your kidney swimming in 15 pints of lager, <laughs> if you're tired of darts. No. It's dart. I'll give you a clue. It's darts related. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's actually a darts. There's a reference referring to a darts player. Famous if Jockey Wilson. Wilson. No, he, no. He'll be, if you're no. if you're tired of Phil Taylor, he's a new one. That's it. Yes. It's the answer is Phil the Power Taylor. If you're tired of Phil the Power Taylor, you're tired of darts. I think I'm tired of darts. <laughs> According to the article in praise of Phil the Power Taylor, Tiger Woods has 14 majors to his name, Roger Federer has 15 in his tennis bag, and Phil the Power Taylor, he has 36. Yes, but then golf and tennis are sports, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Next, bald, what? Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is your neck blowing bubblegum? <laughs> It's to do with a controversial foodstuff. Marmite. That's it. Try Marmite. <laughs> According to the newly released Dictionary of Marmite, the spread was used to combat baldness by rubbing it into the scalp. And lo and behold, from a distance, it looks like <laughs> hair. <laughs> <laughs> if you left it on long enough, it would collect fluff, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Next, Mervyn King what while suffering toothache? Mervyn King lashed out at passers-by in a mad sexual frenzy <laughs> while suffering toothache. In the Norwich area. <laughs> that last bit's not in there. No. They've torn it away, look. It's, it's, it's darts related. <laughs> <laughs> he but was I, playing darts. He was watching darts. That's how they yeah. fix the interest rates. Was they he watching like darts? <laughs> <on the> <laughs> Yeah, Mervyn Mer Mer King is a darts player. Uh, ah, yeah, it's not the governor of the Bank of England. I didn't have him down as a darts and lager man. <laughs> no, then the answer is takes on Mark Flash Dudbridge. <laughs> <laughs> so the final scores are: Ian and Ed have six points, but Paul and Grayson are the winners with seven. But before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. <laughs> Embarrassed band member remembering that he's left the GNU's head on the kitchen table hides behind tuba. <laughs> 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 on which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Ed Byrne, Paul Merton and Grayson Perry. And I leave you with news that at a corner shop in London, one customer spots that there's two P off a small tin of potatoes. <laughs> In Bristol, the parents of young John Davis don't let the fact that he's been swallowed by a hippo interfere with his sixth birthday party. <laughs> and after a demanding day in Westminster, Peter Mandelson gives himself a treat by phoning home to listen to the sound of his own voice. <laughs> Good night. In the corridors of power next, Malcolm Tucker's got an embarrassing political headache and he's standing right next to her. A new series of The Thick of It here on BBC Two and the BBC HD channel.
Ah, stop and check and take. <laughs> the one thing you do not expect, no. Mr. Bond, we stop and check the tape. <laughs> yeah. Which is a worrying moment, the stop and check, because, I mean, if it's not on tape... 